Please turn off your phone. It's the MacGruver's Movie Review. One of the most derided sci-fi movies of all time is, without a doubt, David Lynch's Dune. And not without cause, the movie is a mess. How dare you? Based on a book still considered unfilmable, it's unstructured, confusing, and utterly humorless. The performances are uneven, the dialogue is mostly exposition, and at 137 minutes is still no more than a highlights reel of a story so thick with ideas that in 2000, director John Harrison turned in a made-for-TV version that clocks in at twice that length, and it still doesn't make any damn sense. Many men have tried. They tried and failed? They tried and died. Despite all this, it's one of my personal faves. Because like all the best sci-fi, it's based on big ideas. The kind of questions that can cause a circle of stoners to actually forget that they've got the munchies for anywhere up to three hours or more. Oh my god. What? I've got some f***ing Jaffa cakes in my coat pocket. What if you made a machine out of a man? Now I gotta deal with it. What if a hostile invader could look just like us? You gotta be f***ing kidding. What if man is the true monster? God damn you all to hell! At the box office, these questions are make or break. In Doug Lyman's Edge of Tomorrow, a sci-fi mashup of Starship Troopers and Groundhog Day, Tom Cruise plays a lone fish out of water who, to save mankind, must live and die the same day again and again and again. It's one of the year's best movies and yet failed to draw a crowd because theatre goers were holding over for Transformers Age of Extinction. A series of movies that poses the question, what if big robots were cars? No, 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 no! The answer is explosions, and Michael f***ing Bay has answered this question again and again and again. And you know, very few people know that's actually his real middle name. Storming into this year's lineup of underappreciated high concept sci-fi is Fifth Element director Luc Besson's Lucy, which examines the question of where we're headed as a species, what price our quest for knowledge, and indeed, what it is that makes us human. Life was given to us a billion years ago. What have we done with it? And attempts to answer these questions by having Scarlett Johansson blast her way from Taipei to Paris, leaving piles of perforated underworld thugs in her wake. You speak English? No, no, no. You speak English? Yes. The film's premise springs from the oft-repeated pop culture myth that humans only use 10% of their brain's capacity. And should we ever reach 100%, then yay, we may even become like unto a god. I can feel every living thing. In reality, you may be using as little as 10% of your brain when you hear hear something like that and just accept it. It's nonsense and has been previously responsible for turgid dross like 1995's Powder and 1996's Phenomenon. I'll just administer a local anaesthetic. Don't bother. Because of this, it's been derided by many as just another dumb action movie, but even the best sci-fi can be suspended from threads as thin as this. Or did you really think that a massive dose of gamma radiation will give you superpowers? Do I need to be worried? No. Lucy is a young American woman studying in Taipei who, being a poor judge of character, falls into the high-stakes business of narcotics trafficking. After being press-ganged into service as a drug mule for a new synthetic substance known only as CPH4, a bag of the drug, surgically inserted into her abdomen, springs a leak after a vicious beating from an ignorant middleman and instantly transforms her into an arse-kicking superhero whose powers are growing further off the chart by the hour. It's like all things that make me human are fading away. What could be happening to her? Luckily, Morgan Freeman, as the world's bestest brain expert, is on hand to explain in his buttery Tennessee drawl precisely what we can expect. Interesting things begin to happen. Lucy no longer feels pain, can read minds, diagnose serious ailments by touch, and even control your TV from the other side of the world. And she's not even up to 40% yet. What happens when she reaches 100%? Relentlessly pursued by Besson's favourite brand of villain, powerful, remorseless and motivated by a cartoonish need for closure, Lucy wades through the scores of suicidally devoted bad guys with a casual wave of her hand, her humanity dropping away as she gets closer to 100%. What will happen then, Morgan Freeman? I have no idea. It's utterly preposterous and won't even hold up to even a moment's reflection, but director Besson has a flair for pushing his audience past gaping plot holes and lapses in basic logic, and does so by making even the quietest scenes so engaging that you can just let the silliness wash over you and enjoy the ride. The movie even gives you a full-screen scorecard for Lucy's smarts, so you're kept well in the loop 
without having clunky exposition wrenching you out of the action every 10 minutes. It's a little rudimentary, but you're on the right track. Thank you. Scarlett Johansson ain't Meryl Streep, but her necessarily mannered performance is balanced with enough high stakes bunny in the headlights emoting early on that her character is intensely sympathetic throughout. Bar the shooting, almost the first thing she does with her burgeoning godhood is to phone her mother to thank her for all the love she received, her memory now luminous with every instant of her life from the moment of birth. It made me cry like a wane, and I am not ashamed. The product is very powerful, believe me. The film is punctuated with action scenes that are thrilling, if not wholly original. And while the characters are stock standard for this kind of find her and kill her plotline, the performances by the supporting cast are lively and entertaining, and even the most tense moments are infused with enough humour to keep all but the most cynical pedants on board. It worked for me, anyway. What you did back there, that freaked me out. At least enough so that the visually stunning but completely ludicrous ending wasn't a total deal-breaker. At a tidy 90 minutes, it's a great little slice of fried stupid born on the back of some very big ideas, and one that just happens to carry the message that, in my opinion, is not just important, but absolutely vital to the survival of this demented cabal we call humanity. To wit, it's not knowledge that causes chaos, it's ignorance. Amen. Lucy is in general release across the world. Go see it. All this knowledge, you can unlock secrets that go beyond our universe. Thank you for your kind attention. Please take your belongings with you.